Let's do it. David, was that kind of a tale of two halves? It certainly appeared that yeah. way. You were with them in the first half, and they kind of got hot from three after halftime. Yeah. Um, you know, we we knew that uh, they were three for 22 in the first half from three. Um, and they missed some open looks. And our focus coming out, you know, coming out of the half was to limit uh, their opportunities. But we didn't do a good job of that. We didn't come out with the necessary uh, urgency uh, to take away the three-point line. Uh, but probably more than anything that hurt us was offensively, we got really stagnant. And they do that to teams. Uh, you watch them on film, they get teams to stand, they get teams to hold. And uh, I thought in the second half, that was the difference. Our offense stalled out. and. It allowed them to play off of more misses in transition and catching us in, in different matchup situations. Is that, how difficult was it for Taylor to come back after missing three games almost a week and just trying to get himself back? It's in back. It just goes along with what I said before the game. Is This is, unfortunately, this is the lay of the land. And this is the circumstances that a lot of these guys are going to go through, whether it's us, other teams. You know, he was, he was literally testing – even today and made sure that he got his, you know, got clear today. And, you know, for a lot of these guys to be his last game was so good. And then he comes, he gets knocked out, loses his rhythm, comes back in. Uh, we try to get him right back into his groove and he, you know, it wasn't his best, but I still, I thought he really competed defensively. So. No, no, I, I just wanted to, I, I, I just turning my head to look, um, um, but you've been on LeBron's teams before um, and, and he's had two really good performances in the last two losses. Does it, when he plays like this, like he's been playing, does it feel just a little more, more disheartening to, to lose, even, even though this Phoenix team is very good? The one thing about LeBron, you know, and I don't like speaking for him, but He's not going to get wrapped up in that stuff, and neither are we. Uh, LeBron's looking at all of this as just a new challenge in front of him. Uh, you know, after all of these years, he just doesn't get rattled with any of it. He's not a blamer. He's not a complainer. He's not finger pointing. He's going to figure out solutions. Um, and, you know, tonight's just, a, it was just one of those nights. You, you got Taylor one for 13. You got Isaiah one for 11, and who have been playing very well for us. Um, you know, that's, that's a lot of missed shots. We were six for 22 on open threes, I think, or six for 20, you know, against a team like Phoenix, you just can't miss those shots. And I think LeBron is smart enough to know that those shots will fall at some point. Uh, he's just going to keep leading and, and keep, uh, pushing these guys with positive energy. There's a, Behind the scenes, when you guys kind of evaluate or try to evaluate where this team is <laughs> today, today, um, obviously the sample sizes are, are crazy small. Crazy. Is, is is it still, are you guys still projecting as to what we think we could be, or is it still, or have you seen enough? Well, we're in the fight. That's the bottom line is it's always just, you're in the fight. And, you know, just for whatever reason, this season has just been incredibly choppy for us. You know, we lose Braun early on. Um, AD, sick, banged up, sick banged up and it's like it's just finding a rhythm and a, and a continu continuity with the group um, you know you add Trevor then Taylor and Austin and Malik and these guys go out and it's just trying to find our groove uh, you know as we go through the season and at the end of the day uh, ultimately you know if and when we find our connection we're going to be a really good basketball team and I think it's going to come together too. Phoenix has had the opposite of everything. <laughs> like they've been healthy, um, and they have continuity, and especially they, as they and they're came, kicking ass. Uh, uh, yeah. as, as the game wore on, is that what you saw tonight from them? Absolutely. You know, that's a team that has really, really jailed over the years. Um, they've gone through a lot of suffering, and heck yeah, they got continuity, and they they've been very lucky. That's lucky to be healthy. You know, and when you put a team with that kind of talent, a uh, team that's had that kind of pain in the playoffs, uh, veteran leadership, young talent, I mean, if this is how they will look, and they look good.
They are a good basketball team. You can't make the mistakes we made tonight. You sure as heck can't miss open shots against them uh, and think you're going to keep up with them. So, um, yeah, that continuity thing is a big deal, and I just really feel like under our circumstances, you know, the guys' attitudes and how they've been approaching this whole thing has been fantastic. And that's to me, that makes leads me to believe that we're going to be okay. If it's who, uh, either on the coaching staff or, or on the roster, do you feel like has been a steadying voice in terms of preaching patience and, um, you know, whenever the latest setback comes around? It's collective, man. Like, yeah. it's nobody that is, that, that's out of step from that standpoint. Frustration happens, no doubt. In those film sessions, you got to call out the ugly stuff. Heck yeah. These guys care, man. Like they care so much. You got to think as guys in there that's never tasted the trophy. You know they'll do anything to win. And uh, you know, so the, the 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 voice is a collective voice of stay the course, stay together, go through the rough stuff, figure it out, and keep being solution based. And uh, it's being headed up by Frank and LeBron. They have been fantastic from the standpoint of leading us, you know, and even the other veterans have been great, but you know, obviously this is, this is Brian's deal. And those guys look to Brian uh, to be a leader, but he and Frank have been nothing short of spectacular on from the standpoint of preaching patience, but holding people accountable. Right. It's easy to say, be patient and just gloss over crap and act like things are just all great, but it's not. And they don't let it seem like that. They are calling people out. We're, we're addressing the things that we need to clean up. And those two are really spearheading that. Okay, last question, hey, Coach. I um, wanted to ask you about Trevor Ariza. He was four for four from the field tonight. And, you know, what is he going to just really bring? We know what he brings, you know, on the defensive end, but also, you know, just spacing the floor and how you feel he's been doing. Man, so good to have him out there. He is. He's a calming, uh, just a calming, calming presence. Uh, his, 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 the way he goes about it gives everybody ease. You know what he's going to do on the court. He doesn't try to do stuff that's outside of his skill set. Uh, defensively, he's just so sound. Had a couple moments tonight where they tested his foot, his feet, and he couldn't slide with a few guys, and that's okay because he's just coming back. But for just coming back and throwing him in the fire and you know, him finding that, 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 seeing that ball go in and him really helping us defensively and communicating and doing, you know, executing our coverages the right way is great. And it's just going to get better as he gets stronger. Have a good night, guys.